and we just take a moment to pray in the Holy Ghost this morning even as we are seated I would like for you to pray in the spirit this morning are you still waiting for your neighbor to start before you pray thank you Jesus Thank you, Lord. Romans chapter 8. Book of Romans chapter 8. I just want to read quickly this morning, but I would like for you to join me as we go to Romans. I like the note on which the choir wrapped up this morning, the will of God being done on earth as it is in heaven. I'll read from verse 9 of Romans chapter 8. I'll take a few verses in that Romans chapter 8. I might stop in verse 17 for now. But ye are not in the flesh, for in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, I'd like for you to please focus on the word of God as we read this morning. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus, that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh for if ye live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do modify the deeds of the flesh flesh ye shall live for if for as many sorry verse 14 as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god for if for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, semicolon, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. We will pay a lot of attention to that scripture this morning. In the few minutes that I have to share the word of God, um, maybe it's a journey I'm starting this morning. If I'm not able to finish it, we will continue subsequently when I have the time. I mean, when I'm permitted to bring the word of God again to us. Um, I would read Ephesians chapter 2, but maybe during the course of the message from verse 1 as well for proper understanding of Romans chapter 8 that we just read. So, um, at the miracle service, in August, I think the Sunday, yeah, the last Sunday in August, the Spirit of the Lord began to lead us in the paths of illumination. And the mouth of the Lord decreed or declared that our month or the month of September shall be unto us a month of fruitful advancement. And last Sunday, the Word of God was brought to us in this line of advancement. And one of the very key things that the Lord established to us last week, Sunday, is that it is the Lord who advances men. We saw it in the story of Aaron, Exodus chapter 15 and 14, the story of Aaron and Moses. The Bible says God advanced Aaron in the same way as God advanced Moses. It is the Lord that advances men. But one thing that we share in common, the reason for which we are all seated this morning, um, is what we call the grace of God. And if I ask the church to describe to me what the grace of God is. I'm sure I'm going to get several definitions of what grace is. But it's a possibility for us to have the grace and not enjoy the full benefit of the grace of God. And so when I was praying for these few minutes that I have to speak and share with us, the Holy Ghost dropped upon my spirit to speak on the illumination of His grace. I hardly get titles for my messages, but I think this was very clear. And I'm going to be speaking in direction of light that comes 
from the grace of God that we have. And that Romans chapter 8 and verse 14 that we read is so instructive, particularly from verse 14. As many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In reality, what makes you a son in the kingdom is the leading of the Spirit that you enjoy. So long as you can be sure, you can confirm to yourself that you are being led by the Spirit of God, you are a son of God. So you begin to look at yourself this morning, putting yourself in the scales of divine direction or divine leadings, and ask yourself in the many steps that you have taken, many decisions that have been taken before this day, how far you have come, how much of it can be traced back to God or to His Spirit that dwells in us. And then He began to speak to us of, you know, there was a graduation from verse 14, what sonship is all about. And, you know, um, I read a story, or I heard a story a while back. Charles Spurgeon wrote it in one of his books about the story of a woman who had worked like a cleaner for a very wealthy uh, woman as well. And the wealthy woman passed on. And this um, cleaner was, you know, moved back to her house, you know, wretched, poor. And she was there for a long time. And this wealthy woman gave her a note. And she had that note with her and, you know, put it on the wall. And for many years, that note was there. Apparently, somebody came into that room and who was able to read and by the time the person picked up the writings of the wall, it read that the, apparently the wealthy woman had transferred everything that she had, everything that she had, to this poor, wretched cleaner. But because she could not read, she didn't know what was freely given unto her. And when I remember that story as I was preparing for this uh, short time of the word, the Holy Ghost said to me, the same is still prominent even in the body of Christ today. Blessed be God, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Um, when I'm, I'm talking about reading of the word, I'm not speaking about just picking up the Bible and reading it line upon line, precept upon precept. If there is no light of revelation from the scriptures that you read, it's no different from a storybook. And so that woman had her whole inheritance hanging on the wall for many, many years. Wealth, riches, what could have amounted to her as prosperity. What would have made our life better, easier, you know, sweeter to enjoy? I mean, was hanging there and she never knew. You know, how can you have a will and you don't understand? That's what the Holy Ghost said to me. Son, my people have the will in their hands. They don't read it. When they read it, they don't get illuminated. They don't get light from the will before they drop it. It's even a good place to start from the place of reading, which is the word of God that I'm talking about this morning. But if you don't read, how do you get the light? Just like when he was speaking about, you know, the light of how the gospel is being propagated. He said, how shall they hear without the preacher? How shall the preacher arise if he's not sent? I mean, if you have not even started in the place of committed reading, how can you come into the place of deep insight and revelation? Aga in Genesis chapter 21 had been sent out by Abraham, just like, I mean, the Bible says Sarah, Mama Sarah was very... Uh, angry, you know, because Agar had become pompous in the house, become prideful, and Mama Sarah said to Abraham, enough is enough. Send this bondwoman away. She cannot share with me and my son in the inheritance. And the Bible says this thing that she said grieved Father Abraham. But God said to Abraham, listen to your wife and do what she has said. And Abraham, out of, you know, that compulsion, sent away Agar and the boy Ishmael. And the Bible says in verse 18 and verse 19, they got to a certain place where the boy was so thirsty and he was dying. And the Bible says the boy began to cry. Agar dropped him and just ran away, went to another side, said, I won't see my son die. And the Bible says the Lord, God spoke to Agar and said, I have heard the cry of the boy. In verse 19, God heard the cry, not of Agar, but of the boy. You know, because if you read, subsequently you realize that the Bible says, and God was with the child. Talking about Ishmael, even though he was not part was born out of infidelity. The Bible says God was with the child. And like Pastor will always say, when you see things written like that in scriptures, as soon as I read that word, God was with him. Go and check what be becomes or of, I mean, became of that boy subsequently. You know, when you see that clause, you can almost be sure. You can almost drop your scripture as soon as you see the word God was with him or God with, his, with someone. You can almost be sure what begins to happen with the life of that person. He became a mighty man. But he would have died of thirst. And 
not not because there was no source of sustenance of restoration not because there was no water but because the eyes of the mother was blind to see and she could not see bible says and god opened the eyes of agar god did not create a new well the well had always been there but she was blinded just like the god of this world blinds men and until re revelation came there was no sustenance there was no living there was no sustenance there was no living the boy would have died of thirst the bible says her eyes were open and she saw the well the promise of god or the promises of god can be hanging on your wall can be by your bedside you can put your scriptures under your pillow can be everywhere in print in soft copy in audio version and you may not have come in contact with the sonship or the inheritance that comes with the word of god when paul was living uh, uh, in the book of Acts, chapter 20 and in verse 32 after he had preached for three and a half years in that in that city bible says he left them with strong tears and said one he said began to charge them in verse 32 of act 20 he said i commit you to god and to the word of his grace there is a grace to which our lives has been exposed to the word of god exposes us to the grace of god he said and i'm, I'm committing you to that grace I'm committing you to that word that gives you access into grace because if you do not if you are not committed to that word if you are not a student of that word grace cannot be found prominent in your life he said that word will build you that word will give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified by the faith that is in me and the bible says that was the only child paul gave to the church when he was departing from them and this morning that's the same thing i have come to deliver as the lord has given unto me you may not necessarily know everything that has been freely given unto you unless the light in the room is put on for you to see what your inheritance in God really is. And we have a right to claim this inheritance. There is a progression in Romans chapter 8. Progression from sonship. And it began to explain how we became sons. He talked about adoption. In verse 15, 8, uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 15, he talks about the spirit of adoption. We were once aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. In fact, Paul was writing this book or writing to the Romans who were not natural Jews. And you can almost tell that they felt at some point because they were not circumcised that they could not claim what the circumcision were claiming, which were the natural Israel. Paul needed to reorientate them, bring a new orientation to them that you know what? You may not have been part of the natural Israel who was born by birth. But there is a spirit called the spirit of adoption. And even though once you were aliens, now someone, not something, the spirit of God is a being, has brought you by the blood of the covenant, the blood of the eternal covenant, into the same commonwealth that the children has right unto. Jesus was very clear when he came into the world. His mission statement was very clear. I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Remember the story of Jesus and that woman? The Canaanite woman that came and the son was vexed with the, the devil and it said to Jesus, my, my son is vexed with the devil. He said, Jesus said, I've not been sent to you. I know my vision. I know my mission. And it's very clear. It is to the lost sheep. I cannot give healing to you because you are not a child. You are not a son. You are not part of the natural Israel. And the woman, the Bible says, with her great faith said to Jesus, as we all know, even the dogs, yes, I may not be a son in the kingdom. I may be a dog. You may have called me a dog. But the dogs will gather around the owners of the house. And when they eat, when the bones and the crumbs fall on the ground, they pick it up as, as, as leftovers. And Jesus said, wow, so great is your faith. So great is your faith. That even as an outsider, be, even though my mission is not unto you, I, I am going to do, I am going to heal your boy. I am going to go out of my mission for a second because of your great faith. Because of your great faith, he said, I've not seen this kind of faith even in Israel. And so healing by Jesus at that time, what he was saying was that healing was the bread of the children, the bread of the sons, the bread of the natural Israel. Healing was not for the Gentiles. Oh, but I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Remember, Peter was struggling with the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts chapter 10 when he was summoned by Cornelius. And when he got into the house of Cornelius and he was preaching, Peter struggled with God when he saw a, a, a sheep being let down from heaven and saw all kinds of beasts. And he said to God three times, God said to him, rise, kill and eat. Peter said, no, Lord, I have not taken anything, you know, uh, uh, I've not taken anything corruptible since I've been born. I've not taken anything unclean. No. That, and God said, I have called it clean. 
you go ahead and kill and eat he said no lord because in his traditional mind he could not find a place to he could not place the gentiles as part of the the beloved israel he could not god called israel his son and because they were natural israel just in the same way you find racism you know you may want to describe that in the contemporary world we live in when you find some people just being naturally racist towards a particular skin color or particular nation or tribe or, or tribalist. I mean, uh, you, you see people who are not even just racist, even tribes. They feel they are superior. All kinds of genocide have taken place in this world. You go to Rwanda. We know all what happened because one, one tribe felt superior to the other. And, you know, when Peter was ministering, I am sure, yes, the Holy Ghost led him to Cornelius' house. But he would not have laid hands on those Gentiles, I believe. And that's why the Holy Ghost went outside of him. The Holy Ghost knew that if he had waited on Peter to lay hands for these Gentiles to receive those gifts, maybe he would not have done it. And so as he was preaching the word, just like the Holy Ghost is bellowing on many people this morning, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord went, went outside of Peter and began to <laughs> perpetuate himself on these Gentiles. They began to speak in tongues. And Peter looked and said, wow, I've not even prayed. I've not even laid hands. And the Holy Ghost, who is the common denominator, the Holy Ghost is the common wealth, the blessing of God, everything that you call commonwealth of Israel is packaged in that being called the Holy Ghost. He went about and distributed himself on all the Gentiles. Peter said, now I believe that God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't look at your skin color or your family or the source from which you came to bless you. He doesn't say because you are Pastor Femi's son, that's the only reason why I will bless you. He doesn't look at you and say because you are the president's son, that's why I will bless you. No, he said I am the one who can call one <laughs> even from the dung hill. I raised David. David was not even a legitimate son. He was abandoned at the backside of life. <laughs> but they all stood at his coronation. <laughs> no one could sit. The Bible says Samuel said we will not all sit. We will all stand. <laughs> Have you got a son left? He said there is one who is at the backside of life as the Lord is speaking to someone this morning who is coming in contact with his reality the reality of his destiny that you may be at the last point on the queue everybody seems to have gone ahead of you but this morning grace <laughs> grace is fishing you out from the back of the queue and grace is bringing you to the front of the queue grace is saying this is your coronation day he said today i have begotten you you are my son this day have i begotten you they all stood they all stood for David at attention, even though he was termed illegitimate. The eyes of grace is, you know, the, the eyes of grace, you know, when, when Jacob was blessing the sons of Joseph. Even though the physical eyes were dim, he couldn't see. The Bible says he crossed his hand this way and placed the right hand on the younger and the left on the older. And Joseph said, my father, you won't do this. <laughs> this is the older. Let the older be the greater in our generation the older is always blessed even though joseph himself had forgotten that he was blessed beyond his brethren even though he was younger he was brought from the backside jacob said my physical eyes might be dim the eyes of grace are not dim i know what i'm doing here this morning as the lord is knowing what he's doing to somebody who has come to be healed in his body healed in his bones healed in his family the eyes of grace are not dim they are not blind and when god chooses to bless you he said when i bless no man can reverse it they may call me partial but the grace of God is locating you this morning. The grace of God is coming to your address this morning. I don't care where you are living. You may not be in GRA. And the people in GRA may seem may be thinking the grace should be for them. Well, God is saying you may be in Mushi. But when I want to, when I want to raise a man from the dunghill, I don't look at his physical location. I bring him up by grace. And I set him among the princes. As I speak the word of God into your life this morning, the grace that illuminates, it finds you this morning. It relocates you this morning it brings you into your inheritance that is in God before the foundation of the world in the name of Jesus Christ we have been adopted we have been adopted this grace does not exclude it includes all men who call upon the name of the Lord it doesn't it doesn't care about your beauty it doesn't care about your height it doesn't care about the school you went to you know I was speaking to somebody not quite long and, you know, she happened to have, have taught in the secondary school that I went to. She had happened to have been a teacher in that school. And when I told her, I mean, she's an elderly woman, where I went to, I mean, for 30 minutes, she went all about looking at me and saying, I know the kind of student that we're producing in that secondary school. It's a public school. All kind of hooligans and touts. And she kept saying, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot seem to understand 
or be able to place you side by side that environment because it just looks like no you went to the best of i said this is grace and she said it herself you are a product of grace when people look at your life they will not be able to when they look at where you are coming from and where the lord has brought you by grace <laughs> there will be no basis for comparison i mean they would they would look at both it will be so contrasting but that's what grace can produce grace can produce a contrasting evident miracle result blessing that does not make you look like where you are coming from you are speaking english you are wondering but in your where you are coming from you don't they don't even speak it that way where you are coming from they they are not admitted into palaces they end up at the backside under the bridges but we look at your life today you are in the palace that's what grace can do it can bring a man from nothing into something that is what the grace of god has called us onto we were once aliens just like marriage or just like uh, uh, a child who is adopted she has the same legitimate legitimacy right to inheritance like the natural child just in the same way when a woman i mean in this side i don't know about other countries but in some countries they find that the, the man takes the surname of the of the of the uh, wife's family but in this part in most cases you, the the wife i mean takes the name the surname of the family to, onto, into which she's been married and just as the same way that you drop and relinquish your father's name as a woman to take upon the name of another man <laughs> although you were not born naturally by that man but as soon as you take that name upon yourself you have been adopted everything that accrues to people in that home has become your home that is the mystery of marriage is the mystery of the union that comes between a man and a woman you have been adopted to share in the same inheritance and that scriptures went further in, in in verse 17 talking about talking about our rights as children he said we are children in this kingdom we, are not just, we have not just been adopted. We have become children. And because you have become a, I mean, you have become a child in the kingdom, you can cry, Abba. Abba naturally means daddy. Like I can look at God in the face even though I was a gentile, uncircumcised. Now I can come to God by the blood of the covenant. And I can say, Abba, Father, you are my father. You cannot change your mind anymore. Because when he sees me, he doesn't see my past. He sees Jesus. <laughs> he sees Jesus in my house. He sees Jesus on my job. And, and you re remember the story of, of, of Jesus in Luke chapter 13. The Bible says he was talking about, that was the scripture pastor quoted some weeks ago, about the tree that was not producing fruits and was about to be cut down. And when Jesus was done with that parable, the Bible says in verse, is it verse 10 now of Luke chapter 13, Jesus encountered a woman. <laughs> and the Bible says that woman had been bent over for 18 years. 18 years. And Jesus looked at the woman and said, Woman, thou art loosed. And the Pharisees questioned him, This is the Sabbath day. You don't bless people on the Sabbath day. You don't heal on the Sabbath day. And Jesus narrated to them, If any one of you have an oxen that went missing on the Sabbath, or is losing from his cord, wouldn't you, would you say because it's Sabbath day, let it go lost forever? Or would you quickly run after it and tie your oxen because it belongs to you? The Bible says they kept quiet in verse 17. Jesus said, ought not this woman. <laughs> ought not this woman <laughs> who is a descendant. Whom Satan has bound. Ought not this woman who is a descendant of Abraham. Whom Satan had bound these 18 years be loosened. Ought not this woman. Jesus didn't know her name. Jesus didn't know her family. But one thing Jesus knew. This is a daughter of Abraham. This is a seed of Abraham. And it is not permitted for any seed of Abraham to be imprisoned. The children's bread is healing. The children's bread is peace and longevity. The children's bread is joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. The children's bread is not to be bent over, to to traumatized, terrorized by the enemy. He said, ought not this woman whom Satan had bound is 18 years be freed from her infirmity, being a daughter of Abraham. And this morning, even though you were not born by the natural Abraham, by the one and the sanctified blood of Jesus, the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles through faith. We were not born natural, but we have been adopted into this kingdom. And that's why Jesus cannot see your business bent over. 
Jesus cannot see your child bent over by the and being pressed upon by the enemy. Jesus cannot look at you. Cannot even come to him to him. And that's the illumination God is bringing this morning. And you are beggarly. And you are saying, Baba Joe, eh, can't you see how how I'm suffering? Can't you see how they have taken my right away from me? No, you appear before your father. He said, because you are now children, you are now heirs of God. I'm running ahead of myself this morning. There is no time. He said, you have become heirs of God. So semicolon, you have become joint heirs with Christ. That means that's another level. If we have been raised together with Christ and made to sit together with him in the heavenly places, even in Christ, whatever Christ has, I have. Whatever Jesus cannot, cannot go through, I cannot go through. If Jesus cannot be sick and then you go to the hospital and say, we are looking for him in what nine. Jesus, the son of God is there. Or he wrote an exam and out of those who failed, they found, they found his matriculation number. Or those who are suffering. Or those who they go to their back accounts and they say he has nothing. Jesus, every time he was being cornered, they said to him, pay your tax. He didn't have any money in his pocket. But he said, he said to Peter, go to the sea. I cannot be cornered. I am a son. I am a son. My resources is hanging everywhere. Whether I'm in Nigeria, my money will meet me there. I may go to Dubai, it will meet me there. Everywhere I go, his spirit is there and is alive. And as long as his spirit is there, whatever that I desire or want will come to me. I don't beg for bread. David said, I've been young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've not seen their sick begging for bread. This morning's illumination is to the end that you stop living a beggarly life. Don't beg man. Don't borrow from man. Don't seek help from man. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 20, he said, may the name of the God of Jacob, he said, may the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. He said, may the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Let him send you help out of his sanctuary. As long as you are connected to Jacob, Abraham, you cannot be defenseless. You go to the courts, you know, defense, whether the court of the earth or the court of heaven, and you are just there stripped naked, and you are helpless. God is saying, no, that's not your story. For God is our refuge and strength. Our very present help in trouble. Our very present help in trouble. Don't go before God, couching under your trouble, crying, and feeling oppressed, and feeling depressed, and let the devil roll over you. No, say to the devil, I am a child of God. My son name is Jesus. His spirit is living on the inside of me. I am a joint heir with Christ. Whatsoever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. That's why I said I love the note on which the choir ended this morning. Ah, First Peter chapter 1, let me read that scripture before I leave this place. You know, she, uh, she quoted that scripture that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. First Peter chapter 1, very quickly, my time is already up. Let me just read this scripture for a consolidation of understanding. This will take you out of restlessness. Hey, verse 3. He said, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, First Peter chapter 1, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. He said, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. You know, if you read that scripture with a religious mind, anytime you hear that word that is reserved in heaven, um, you may, the devil may tell you that lie. Yes, it means that when you get to heaven, after the rapture, that's when we get this incorruptible, undefiled inheritance that faded not away because it's reserved in heaven. No, do not read scripture with a religious mind. They don't spend money in heaven. The inheritance is not needed in heaven. They only worship and praise in heaven. They, they don't drive cars in heaven. What he's saying, just like a nation has foreign reserve. Nigeria is Nigeria, but we've got foreign reserve. If we need to call our foreign reserve, we can call it down and spend our foreign reserve. God is saying to you, you have your foreign reserve in heaven. You have your health in heaven. You have your joy in heaven. You have your peace in heaven. You have your cars in heaven. But they cannot remain in the heavenly realm. They are reserved. Whatsoever you bind on earth, 
is bound in heaven if you lose your car that is parked in the garages of heaven it will show up for you on the face of the earth it is reserved in heaven but it should be used on earth i want to bow your head this morning and just give god praise for all that is reserved for you in the heavenly places it's not needed when you get to heaven it is here on earth it is on earth it is on earth that we command it and it shows up give him praise for all the inheritance rights that you have in god let's give daddy all the praise and worship him let's magnify him that lives forever give him all the glory give him all the glory thank you jesus give him all the glory thank him because today is the day we are stepping into the manifestations of what heaven carries over our lives the Bible says to an inheritance incorruptible that doesn't fade reserved in heaven <laughs> it's not talking about what you labored for nobody labors for an inheritance you only receive an inheritance you don't work for it there are times you lay up some things in heaven by reason of your labor your generosity you're giving Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 the Bible says lay up your treasures in heaven yes heaven carries the ones you lay up and also carries the one you did nothing about <laughs> uh, thanks be unto God because it's bringing us to the place of knowledge the place where we step into that which he has reserved for us we give you all the praise and daddy we want to say thank you you're here you want to give you a lot of jesus wherever you are right now i want your hands laid on your chest and i wanted to talk to him right now say father about your word i want to be one of those that are heirs of the kingdom you know the beautiful thing according to the scripture pastor Tim was sharing from romans chapter 8 verse 17 is that the Bible didn't say we are co-heirs with Christ. The Bible says we are joint heirs. To be a co-heir simply means it is divided in clear portions. Or oh, probably 90, 10, 60, 40, 70, 30, 20, 80, or 50, 50. But in this case, we are joint heirs. We own it 100, 100. We have it all together. There is nothing that belongs to Jesus that does not belong to us. So the fullness of heaven belongs to you. That's what the Bible said. Ephesians 1 3, God has blessed us with all, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. There is nothing in heaven anymore that has not been released. It has been emptied on our lives. I just wanted to talk to Jesus right now. Father, I come in on you. I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. That your life, your glory may be in me. I want to partake of all you are releasing over the house today. Sweet Holy Spirit, the marvelous one carrying heaven on earth. Come inside of me as I believe today. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving my soul. The Bible says, if I believe and I confess, I shall be saved. I believe. And I'm saved. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are okay in the house, you know that God's blessings are upon your lives. Come on, shout hallelujah. You know that the joy of the Lord is so strong upon you. Come on, shout a louder hallelujah. You know that you didn't wake up on the wrong side of bed this morning and you know you have inheritance, sure. <laughs> you have so much even in heaven reserved for your life that God today is unleashing in a different dimension. I think your hallelujah shout should be the loudest in the house. <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. I welcome everybody to service once again. I will thank God for the word we have received and we've heard right now. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, 
It's one thing to hear the word. It's another thing to do the word. There are two different things. Hearing is not sufficient. We give God a praise for hearing. But it is the act of doing that provokes the blessing. I don't know if you get what I'm talking about. Matthew chapter number 7, the Bible said from verse 24, he said, of course, whoever heareth my sayings and doeth it, I liken him unto a man who builds his house on the rock. The one who doesn't do, I liken him unto a man who builds his house on the what? On the sand. The two of them are building. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, the one who has sustainability, the one who has perpetuity, the one, ladies and gentlemen, that has prosperity to his labor, is the one that builds on the solid rock. So, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, building on the solid rock simply means you are doing. In James chapter number one, the same thing the Bible says, uh, uh, a man who hears the word of God, of course, and uh, I liken him unto one who looks at himself in a mirror. And straightway you forget what manner of man he is because he doesn't do the word. But the Bible says, whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty, James 1, 205, and continues daring. Not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. The Bible says the same is blessed in all his deeds. So ladies and gentlemen, today, it is the doing that provokes the blessing. And we are here to do something. Amen. Come on, tell somebody, I'm here to do something. <laughs> you see, every time I hear about blessings, a lot of people just want to hear, receive, and go. But for me, it is not yet complete. It is not yet perfect until you tell me what to do. Because refit doesn't place all the responsibilities for performance on God. No. Refit shares responsibility with God. You have your part, I have my part. There's a God was side and there's a man was side. What am I to do to position myself? Am I talking to somebody here? I told the last journey I went, Lord, we are traveling. Ah, uh, God, we are traveling. He just keep praying. And God said, okay, I'm, I'm, I keep hearing too. Because you know what to do. <laughs> I, I said, but I don't see, if I will not move, the ticket will not come. So what are we doing? Everybody traveling. Uh, oh yeah, call the airline. Tell them we are paying tomorrow. That same day how the money came in. If I don't take the step, it won't come. So if I don't do my side, God will not do what? His own side. So ladies and gentlemen, today there is a side that belongs to us. <laughs> Every time somebody there is a side that belongs to me. And that is exactly what we are demonstrating today. Because the moment, you, you see, you can be on something for long. I, I told you I wanted to buy a set of chairs many years ago. And I was praying, Lord, chairs, change. Chairs. I, I will even come to the city room. Chairs, I decree. Change. <laughs> And one day, God just looked at me. He said, come, you this boy. Let me have mercy on your ignorance. He said, you continue praying. He said, nothing will happen because you know what to do and you refuse to do it. Ah, from that day, I stopped praying. But I sing, tomorrow, we are going to buy. We went straight. We priced. He said, this one is also, I said, yes, that's the one I want. So, so million. I said, that's the one I want. And then, as we were walking out of there, I said, but I sing, I don't have this money, but I show you how faith works. Uh, it was a Saturday. I said, by Monday, we are coming to pay. By Sunday, all the money came in. Not even from here at all. It came from Abuja. <laughs> Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? And then by Monday, we paid. So when we went on Monday, and I was telling the lady that, you know, when we came here, it was Saturday, I didn't have the money. The lady would look at me like that. She was laughing. <laughs> but I said, you know, I've been praying for weeks on this thing. You know, it, it didn't work. But the day I took the step, all heavens opened. So that means the day you do what you're supposed to do, that is what God is just waiting for. May I know what to do. That I may connect with what to receive. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? Today is a special day. We're going to be experiencing the glory of God. We're going to be receiving today. And I want to share with you just something to receive. Something mighty. The Holy Spirit is moving in this place. And I wanted to know, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have an outpouring of the river of life here today. You know, waking up this morning, coming into service, there's this song that has been coming up in my spirit. Come to the river of life. You will find healing. <laughs> as many as are sick in the house today, you will find healing. Now, sickness doesn't have to be biological alone. You can have sickness in different aspects of life. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? You can have a menace in different aspects of life. In Matthew chapter number 10, starting from verse number 1, the Bible said, and Jesus, of course, caused those who would unto himself, and he gave them power against all unclean spirits. 
to cast them out and to heal all manner. See, can you see all manner? So it's, it's not one manner. It's what? All manner of sickness and disease. The word disease simply means against ease. Whatsoever is against comfort is against ease in your life. The Bible says he's healable. <laughs> you know, there can be a financial disease, a financial pathology. Am I right? <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. You see, there can be a material disease. You can be having lack of ease at home, where you're living, where there's a lot of tension. The landlord is giving you a lot of tension. You see, God can look at you and say, you know what, I'm not just going to change the I'm not going to change the house. I'm actually giving your own house. It's the almighty God. And with him, all things are possible. I saw some terrific miracles this week as a mind-blowing miracles. I was sharing some uh, two days ago, you know, as a mind-blowing miracles. Mind-blowing miracles. Mind-blowing me. I got some that I couldn't sleep. I was, Lord, I was like, Holy Spirit, you could walk this way to bring these things out. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to, you know, go into testimonies because of time. But one thing I want to let you know is this. He's mighty in the house to do what he will do. Ezekiel chapter 47. Now, the one who wrought wonders is here. He will do something unique in your life. Amen. Ezekiel 47, please, can we... Can we turn our Bibles there? Ezekiel 47, starting from verse number 1, the Bible said... And he brought me, of course, to the door of the house. And water I saw gushing out of underneath the treasure, I mean, threshold of the house. Towards, of course, the east direction. And, you know, this man said the water was coming out from the right side. <laughs> that is the side of his power. The Bible talks about come and sit down at my right and my right what? Right hand. <laughs> Until I make your enemies what? And thou who Lord through the greatness of your power. Shall your enemies what? Submit. So that is the side of power. <laughs> the Bible said I saw. What he's what talking about is I saw the power of God flowing like a river. I saw the anointing of the Holy Spirit flowing like a river. Please understand ladies and gentlemen. This is what the world needs today. This is what Nigeria needs right now. This is what the economy of this nation needs. This is what everybody all over the world needs. You need a flow of the river of life. When this river begins to flow, when it begins to come out in the power dimension of God, ladies and gentlemen, believers naturally live above scarcity. They live above, ladies and gentlemen, even shortages. They come into the realm of the abundance of God. They come to see the supernaturality of His power in His rawness every day in their life. <laughs> a time has come not a time will come when you stretch your hand like this and say dollars fly and it will fly do you understand what i'm talking about a time has come when you will say in the name you see I, 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 the holy spirit was taking me through something one day he said you know god said let there be let the heart come forth he said and everything came for he said time is coming when the body of christ you will stand on an empty land and say house this design now manifest and the whole house we just come up somebody will be like ah that's magic yeah if the demons can do that can't the holy ghost who created demons do better than that answer me now can the holy ghost who created satan himself and all the demons can't he do better please understand ladies and gentlemen you see it is unto you according to your what according to your faith the time has come ladies and gentlemen when we decree and those things will come to pass when pastor uh, pastor me was preaching i was talking about whether in nigeria whether in dubai whether wherever you need money money meets you there that is it you see we we come to a level where we understand that god has taken us above these things and we function in the realm. Are you catching what I'm talking about? Now listen, ladies and gentlemen. This is the point, And this is the uh, thing that the Holy Ghost is passing across today. The Lord is telling us something very strategic here. That there is a river of life that is the terminal hand to problems. In Psalm 46, right? Psalm 46, the Bible says, of course, the Lord is our, is our refuge and our very present in, in trouble. He said, those, they had be removed. 
though of course the mountains even be shaken and be cast into the sea, even though the this be, the, I mean the this is happening or the that is happening, he said he said there is a river. Verse number four. He said and this river liko pra liko rodoxtek sekatada. He said this river neke prodigaro to seko prodigarosta. He said but there is a river and this river of course goes into the city of God. He said the Bible says this river. The Bible says the Lord is in the midst of her, therefore she shall not be moved. There is a river. Once it introduces that, remember it started with a concept of problems. Though this is happening. Though Nigerian economy is crashing, though inflation is happening all over the world, he said, but there is a river. You know what he's talking about? He said, in this river is the solution to all human problems. If you can locate that river, if you can dip yourself in that river, Pastor Adibu, he said, when they say when the Holy Ghost moves, it's like a river. He said, you just jump inside of it, and then you see yourself experiencing all that it carries. That is it. That is it. I said, that is it. There is a river. I said, there is a river. All it takes is just for you to do what? To jump inside of it. You know, a woman was sharing testimony with me uh, on Friday. This woman had a bad, you know, kidney case. They've taken mama everywhere. And then I said, mama, don't worry. And, you know, they gave a report that the kidney was almost packed up, 7% functioning. And then lay hands on her back. I said, mama, go back to the same hospital in England and let them test. <laughs> mama went back. The same doctors who said, we are sorry, this thing is gone. They, they tried to put tube. They did this. It's, 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 the case is hopeless. They now, this, when they did test again, ah, doctors said, what happened? Ah, what happened? God restored everything. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the woman could have been like, this is an hopeless case. They said they were looking for money, even to, 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 to travel, to go and do surgery, to go and do this. I said, no, you go back. There is a river that terminates this thing. They, this man, John G. Lake, was praying in South Africa. In Acts, I mean, and then an angel flew into his presence. And the angel just got a Bible and opened it. And it opened to Acts chapter number 2. He says, seek this experience. That is Pentecostal experience when the Holy Ghost came. You know, the Holy Ghost is the river. John chapter 7, verse 37, out of the bellies of those that believe shall flow the rivers of living waters. And the Bible says this, he talked of the Holy Ghost, which has not been given to man. Now, the, 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 when the Holy Ghost was given, Acts chapter 2, the angel was pointing, he says, seek after this experience, for therein lies the solution to all human problems. He says, seek after this experience. That's what he told John G. Lake. And John G. Lake started. Ladies and gentlemen, that man healed terrifically. He went back to America. He stayed in Spoken. Spoken became, he got the award for the mood, LD City all over America. Nobody was sick. Hospitals packed up in Spoken because John G. Lake was there. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Every sickness was getting healed there. And he would call out doctors. He said, he wants to mess up doctors. He said, come, come on. He said, doctors, demons. You know, I, I was, I was watching a, uh, uh, Robert Leadon. Robert Leadon said, can you imagine somebody putting, no, it was Corey Blake. Corey Blake said, can you imagine somebody putting doctors and demons in the same category? He said, all oh, doctors and demons, come, come and, come and be surprised. <laughs> and then you will see somebody that never had, that never had highs. John G. Lake will lay hands before everybody. New highs will come out. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He healed everybody he spoken completely by the power of the spirit now please understand the angel gave him the solution he says seek after this experience the flow of the holy ghost he said therein lies the solution to all human experience ladies and gentlemen the solution is in the house today the bible says i saw that river flowing out of the temple the right side of it <laughs> and verses eight and nine please can we just check ezekiel chapter 47 verses eight and nine there's something the river is to do here today we are going into it right away. Verses 8 and 9. Can I get a loud reader on the house? Ezekiel 47, verses 8 and 9. Unto me. This, then said he unto me, yes. These waters issue out toward the east country. Oh, yes. And go down into the desert. Mm -hmm. And go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. Mm-hmm. And it shall come to pass. Now this water goes into the sea. The water shall be healed. You know what is, God is talking about? As you leave this place, every human community you get into, they will be healed there. You get into your homes. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, they will be healed there. Wherever you step into, mighty flows of healing will take place. Cancer will disappear. I mean, all manner of sickness and disease will disappear. 
You know, somebody was talking to me, is it two days ago? Had cancer. Very terrible cases. And then we started praying. And the person told me, he said, Pastor, this is what the Lord has done. Even the doctors cannot believe. You understand what I'm talking about? That is when the case has got into an hopeless case, but the Almighty God reversed it. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what that situation is. Wherever you go, by the masses of the Most High God, God will take away impossible cases. The mighty, that was, this is what God told me before I stepped into the auditorium. He said, the anointing will be so much on you that any community you step into, people will experience the glory of God. You will step into a boss, the sick and the boss will be healed. It is without you. It is without your knowledge. It is, ladies and gentlemen, the external operation of the spirit that has nothing to do with your mentality. It will be bypassing you as it bypassed Peter while he was preaching. And the Holy Ghost was resting upon all that had him. Ladies and gentlemen, a particular radius around you, people will be experiencing miracles. I'm telling you, that will be what I call a power circumference around you. Oh, man, I'm talking to somebody here. I said that will be a power circumference around you. That will be a power communities where there is no light you will enter right now this week the light will be fixed communities where there has been a perpetual oppression you will enter and in the name of jesus liberty shall be proclaimed in those communities if that is your community let your human be the loudest in the house so please continue verse number nine and it shall come to pass and it shall come to pass that everything that leave it mm -hmm. which move it <laughs> with uh, so ever the river shall come shall oh be. yes hallelujah <laughs> yes and there shall be a very great multitude of fish god bless you because these waters shall come peter god bless you but they shall be healed and everything shall leave whither the river coming god bless you the bible says and it shall come to pass that wherever this river goes whatever comes in contact with it it comes in contact with the eternal life of god it comes in contact with the power of god with the anointing of the holy ghost the power will be so strong ladies and gentlemen that when you when you touch anything, that thing will be impregnated with the power of God. <laughs> the seat you are sitting on, I'm telling you, will be impregnated with the power of God. Whatsoever you touch, ladies, I mean, the life of God will rest upon it. You will touch the door of your car, life will be on it. You will touch your building, I said life will be on it. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? You know, a daughter of mine was with me, and there was a witch in their house. I said, you know what then? You just come. And then I prayed with her. I think I lay hands on her hands. I said, when you get home, just lay hands on your house and tell me what happens. The lady got there, lay hands on her house. The witch cried out and fled. Out in her, you know, they shared the same beauty. And fled out of the house. Oh, there's Sajad Rebbe saying, but like though and Haro, do you understand what I'm talking about? Piers. And I was like, come, I just lay hands on this girl. It's <laughs> simply who. And I said, where you go? Tell me what happens in the house. <laughs> it's not what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what the Holy Ghost is doing. The witch had to run away. You know the meaning of that? Regardless of the rent, oh, salon. From that day as she stepped into the house. Listen, from today, as she stepped into your office, many will leave that are incompatible with the order of glory that you carry. I said they will run away from you. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, and everything that came in contact with this river, the Bible said it came alive. Ladies and gentlemen, dead finances will come alive. Dead relationships will come alive. Please, hopelessness, I mean despondency, will be addressed out of your life. Everything that is hiding in any aspect of your life that is not in line with the perfect plan and purposes of God concerning your life, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they will take their leave today. I said life is showing up in your life. I said life is showing up in your life. You've had it too cool. The Spirit of the Lord is telling me. He said, somebody has had it too cool for so long. He said, right now, he's speaking up. He's speaking up. He's speaking up. He's speaking up. All trance is coming on your health. All trance is coming on your finance. All trance is coming on every side of your life. By the power of the Holy Ghost, everything is working for you. Come on, turn to the left and say, it's working for me. I mean, move to the right and say, it's working for me. Look forward and say, it's working in my life that's exactly the other glory you're going to be experiencing from today now please read verse number 12 the bible said of course on both sides of the river you have some plants planted and there is something about this you know i was in prayers yesterday with one of our members yesterday night and suddenly my eyes were opened and i saw leaves the leaf was as big as my chair very big 
In fact, I didn't even understand it when I firstly saw it. So I was just like, God, what's the meaning of this? And the leaf was so big. And then the Lord began to speak to me. He said, this is the leaf of the tree of life. That was the word that came. Now, that leaf of the tree of life is for healing. It's for healing. I've had a man of God who had this kind of revelation before. It's for healing. When I saw that leaf, I didn't understand what it meant. But the Lord said, this is for healing. Now, please. Yes. Verse number 12. And by the river upon the bank thereof, mm -hmm. on this side and on that side, oh, yes. shall grow all trees for meat, oh, yes. whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruits thereof be consumed. Oh, yes. He shall bring forth new fruits according to his months, oh, yes. because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary. Oh, yes. And the fruits thereof shall be for meat, oh, yes. and the leaves thereof for medicine. And the leaves thereof for what? Now the Bible says the river is on both sides and they bring forth their fruits even according to his months. You know what God is talking about? When this river flow all over you today, for there is a river. The stream of which make a glad a city of the Lord. The Lord is in the midst of her. You know one thing, when it flows all over this place today, <laughs> listen, the Bible says your life will produce in a season. It will bring forth his fruits according to his what? According to his months. That is to say there will be no time in your life when there is no result to show. Resourcefulness and absolute fruitfulness will flood all over you. Remember we are in the month of fruitfulness. I'm talking to somebody here. You are generating your results according to your months. In every day of your life, ladies and gentlemen, you will be having daily drops. Give us this day our daily bread. Not a single day shall you miss out on divine provisions for your life. Your divine allotment is showing up and is coming your direction in the name of Jesus. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, see what the Bible said there. He said the fruit is for food. That is satisfaction. That is strength. That is nourishment. And the Bible says the leaves for medicine. That is restoration. That is to say, I don't care what you lost in time past. Maxine, ladies and gentlemen, restores your head back. God said there will be mighty restoration. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I round it up. Revelations chapter number 22, verse 1 to 3. Revelations 22, I want all of us to read again, please, project. Revelations 22. Revelations 22 and verse 1 to 3. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to read one to go. Yes. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, <laughs> clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Mm. In the midst of the, of the street of it, mm -hmm. and on either side of the river, mm -hmm. was there the river of life, mm -hmm. the tree of life, mm -hmm. which bare twelve manner of fruits, mm -hmm. and yielded her fruit every month, mm -hmm. and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, please understand, what is the difference between what you just read now? And what you read in Ezekiel 47, exactly the same. But you know what God is saying? If, you, if this is the only one in the scriptures, all we'll be saying is, it is in the sweet by and by that you're going to have this kind of possibilities. But God is saying that there is a temple that is here now. This is on ground here. Fishermen fishing. This is on ground here. Ezekiel 47 is telling you that there is a contemporaneity of what is happening in heaven and that, that, that is happening on earth. That whatever you see there is here. That is will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So ladies and gentlemen, the Ezekiel 47 is talking about your own temple. He's talking about here and he's talking about your body. He's talking about here, ladies and gentlemen. He's telling you that what is available in heaven is available here, this, ladies and gentlemen. And that your reality, ladies and gentlemen, are heavenly realities. They are not just any kind of reality. That in healing, ladies and gentlemen, the leaf of that tree, the Bible says it's for the healing of the nation. I saw that leaf yesterday night. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be healing in this place today. <laughs> I don't care what our situation is. Bone conditions shall be healed in this place. Ladies and gentlemen, as we begin to praise God, whatsoever you want to do, whether you are going, don't wait for somebody to say, oh, you are healed. No. Just get out of it. Get out of your wheelchair. If you came here with one, get out, drop your crutches. Start walking forward. Whatever you cannot do, start doing. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you will see deaf ears popping open. I mean, within the last two, three weeks, we've, we've seen quite a number of deaf ears popping open. You will see a whole lot right now. You will see miracles. Do you know what I'm talking about? All you just need to do is just to do what? Just step into the miracle. Just do what? Just step into it. The Bible says the river is here. And the Bible says is producing for the healing of the nations. Now, verse number three, there's something very important there, which God told me specifically. He pointed my eyes to it. Oh, Lord Jesus, and this is a great blessing. Verse three, yes. There shall 
and there shall be no more cause mm -hmm. but the throne of god and of the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him god bless you the bible says and there shall be no more what cross you will heat out of the sweat of your face is a curse you will deliver in travail is a curse ladies and gentlemen thorns and tissues that means insatisfaction dissatisfaction retrogression and ladies and gentlemen all manner of affliction and negativity they are causes do you understand what i'm talking about anything you could ever think of all the causes in deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 15 downwards they are all causes the bible says there shall be no more cause don't tell me there is something called ancestral cause in your life the bible says today there is a nullification don't tell me there is a negativity that had been operational in your family. The Bible says today there is a discontinuity. It said there shall be no more cause. If only that river can flow, seek after this experience. For therein lies the solution to all human problems. If only that river can flow, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says there will be mighty, total elimination of all negativities. So today, ladies and gentlemen, how do I take my step? And how do I move into the flow of that river? It is just by praising God. <laughs> it is just by praising God. <laughs> you know, the Bible says, insofar as it is received with thanksgiving, it is sanctified. A lot of believers don't know how to receive what God is offering. God is saying, this is an inheritance reserved in heaven for you, which is practically meant for the heart experience. You see, foreign reserve of Nigeria is not spent abroad. It's spent here. The other I'm talking about, when Jonathan came, Pastor John was... Saving and saving. Jonathan came and he bought after his own name. He spent everything. Ambassador John lamented, but his lamentation had no effect. You understand? Because somebody must act according to his name. Joe Nathan. <laughs> it depleted the foreign reserve completely. <laughs> Glory be to God. Until they said Nigeria had no money again. Oh no, but the bank of heaven cannot be bankrupt. <laughs> and you can finish it concerning a nation here. But in heaven, no. So ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to praise the Lord and receive what heaven carries. You receive the blessings. We receive the glory. We receive the testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. All hands lifted, all hands lifted wherever you are. Worship him. Worship him. Just worship him wherever you are right now. All hands lifted. Just worship him. Thank him for all some things he has done in this place today. Uh, worship his holy name. Holy Communion. Alleluia. Worship His holy name. Alleluia. 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 Worship is holy name. Awesome things have taken place here today. Somebody's perpetual ulcer has been healed. Pains in the stomach area, into the chest area has been healed. Give him all the praise. Worship is holy name. Hallelujah. 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 
Alleluia, Alle, Alleluia. standing you can stand for long God said check yourself you've been healed you've been healed you've been restored and I see a mighty depth cancellation wave some will happen on Monday Tuesday some will happen towards the close of the week into next week as well see the spirit of the living God everybody that has bills to pay miracles Miracles, 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 healings in your bodies. As in the name of Jesus, you take this right now, healings enter your bodies afresh. By the power of the Holy Ghost, in the mighty name of Jesus, I prophesy open doors, I prophesy wonders, I prophesy elevations, I prophesy promotions. I prophesy breakthroughs wherever you turn. Nako parados te selatayagaba. The app of the Lord, the app divine, right now, penetrating, percolating, and entering forcefully into your lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Little post a little shakata yagaba. Healings have taken place in people's bodies. Check your body. Check that area of deficiency. Deaf ears are unstopped. 
by the power of the Holy Ghost, blind eyes are open. You could not smell. God said, go and smell something now. <laughs> There's somebody here in your nasal cavity, you've just been healed. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you've just been healed. Go and smell. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord Jesus Christ. The same night of his betrayal, the Bible said he took the bread and he said, this is my flesh broken for you. He said, take this in remembrance of me. To remember me. To put my members together. As you take these, all members of your body are put together. Reignited with the fire of the Holy Ghost. I said, reignited right now unto total rejuvenation. Reignited right now unto total functionalities. As you take this right now, life enters you afresh and makes you whole. Thank you, Jesus. And what a joy, what a joy that fills my soul. Something happened now I know. He touch, break the bread, and makes me take it in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. He touch me. He touch me. And what a joy that fills my soul. is being taken away. I could see it in the spirit. Go and check it. They call it fibroid. Go and check it. Go and check any growth, any lump in your body by the power of the Holy Ghost. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it right now. Irregularities in your flow has been addressed out by the power of the Holy Ghost right now. Now I know and it touched me Same night he took the wine he and he said, This is my blood poured out for you. He said, So take it, take it, remembrance of me. Now you're gonna take this right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is the blood of Jesus, the blood of the covenant that delivered those that have been cast into the pit of hopelessness. If there is a case that they call irreversible, today is your day. If there is a situation that is called irrecoverable, today is your day. If there is a condition in your life that the enemy said this is unchangeable, today is your day. As you take this blood of Jesus, there is a total nullification and total cancellation, revocation by the power of the Holy Ghost of every negativity that has been cast on your life as a spell. Causes are lifted. There is deliverance in the house. Oh, I can see a woman. Wow, mama. The Lord said in the month of October, Pararoste Sakataya Gaba. He said that new beginning concerning that fertility will visit you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please take the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we don't have time to take too many testimonies, but I just want to say this. Check your bodies right now. You know healing has taken place. Now, if you have not felt it, don't say amen.
I don't want those who want to say amen by faith. Of course, all we do is by faith. But I'm talking about those who can feel what daddy has done. If you are that person, shout hallelujah. Now, by the mercies of the Most High God, please, next Sunday, we'll take testimonies. Make sure you are here. Now, you had a condition. Please go and, take, go and do your test. Okay? Uh, you had a virus. Go and do your test. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Please, I want you to come here next Sunday with medical report of all the Lord has done. They told you that you had a fibroid. Go and do your test again. Please come back with a medical report. Next Sunday, we'll be taking testimonies. The Lord bless and keep you. He watches over you and is heavily and mightily gracious unto you. Lift up holy hands and give him praise for all he has done here today. Everybody give him praise. Once again, give him praise. I say give him praise. It can be louder. It can be with shout. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, it's been awesome. For those of you who have been healed, please make sure that you give God thanks. And then those who need to do test, do their test. Now the healing part has been deposited in some people's body. You might not have felt healing right now. As you keep going home, you will be seeing healing on the way. One day, two day, three days, you will see what the Lord has done perfectly. By the masses of the most, every growth disappears. You know, when a service like this, that King Balagun brought one man. And the man, you know, he had issues in his reproductive area. I was just ministering, I said, there's someone here in your reproductive area, you're healed. The man said, when he went home, he said, burning sensations all over that area. And he went to his back where he was having pains as well. He said, burning sensations. He wanted to call me that, Pastor, leave this eat is too much. The, and then by the time the burning sensation disappears, he said, every infirmity left. Everything perfectly restored. So I'm talking to somebody here, by the masses of the Most High God, in the name of Jesus. First day, second day, third day, you will discover that everything called infirmity has disappeared. So we'll see you next Sunday with testimonies. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Those who are looking for anything, you get it this week. Because favor is yours. I said great favor is yours. Contracts are coming through for you. Great favor is yours. The Lord bless and keep you in Jesus' name. I think we need to scatter legs all the way out, even into our homes. Uh, you can't just, uh, just come into his presence. I mean, in terms of coming into church and living church, just anyhow. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? We've got to close with praise again. Amen? We started in praise, it is ending in praise. <laughs> because this week, we surely end in praise in your life. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. Baba Daruko Cho, Iwo Loye, Lati Daoko, Iwo Oh, you're
We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers and counselling, you can reach us on the following numbers 80 7076938 and 0802828 or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash dgccintl instagram at dgccintl on YouTube, search Divine Glory Christian Church. Our Twitter handle is at DGCCINTL. Stay blessed.